What's up guys, as you read in the title today, I'll be ranking all 15 agents in Valorant. This list shouldn't be taken too seriously as it's just my opinion. I'm immortal and these are just my opinions on all the agents. I'll be giving you guys my thoughts, opinions, and whether they're good or not and you if you should use them. So that being said, let's get into the video. So with Breach, um, Breach is actually kind of interesting. His utility is very good. He has good flashes and he also combines very well with Jet. Uh, we'll talk about Jet in a second. Um, he combines very good with her because if like he could flash, like for example, see Haven, see Long and Haven, and then Jet could dash and then maybe get a pick and get maybe info even. So he's really good with other agents. He's also good for retaking sites, good for um, just like clearing angles, good for pushing all sorts of angles. His ultimate is also pretty good. Uh, it basically stuns all the players that are in the radius and it pushes them back as well. This is good for like retaking all sites. He's good on Ascent, Haven, Split, Bind, but he just like, the only th the only downside is that he's not that good by himself and his abilities are pretty expensive. So I think A is a good spot to put him. Let's go! Also his flashes are harder to look away than most other agents. So this kind of puts him above all the other flash characters. So yeah, he sits on A. So with Jet, I think Jet is probably going to go like somewhere over here, maybe like a C, maybe even an F, because the problem is that her dash or updraft can't actually like kill anybody, so it's like not too useful. Okay, but like in all seriousness, I think Jet is, Jet is actually like an S tier agent, because Jet is just like so consistent on all maps. There's not a single map that Jet just doesn't perform well on. Jet is basically only limited to your game sense and mechanical skill. I think Jet is one of the easiest characters to learn, but one of the hardest to master. Another upside about Jet is that it's really fun to play her. Uh, it's really fun to use like all different guns, to use the knives. Um, since like she's really fun to play, it kind of makes you want to play her and you get better with her. So basically on defense with Jet, you could just shotgun and snipe. On attack, you could just like dash in and clear angles, help your team. It's really good for basically like every single situation. The only real downside is that her smokes only last 4.5 seconds, which is kind of a short time. And if you want to like get the bomb halfway, you're gonna have to be quick with it because the smoke will fade and you could get killed. So next we have Brim. Whoa, Yankee with no Brim. And Brim is actually a pretty good agent. I would probably put him on B. Obviously this list is um, like from S to F, but there's no like really F tier. Like there's no like terrible agents, like generally, but this is just compared to other agents, um, like like spread them out basically. Brim would say at B, and this is because like just by himself, his smokes aren't the best. He has to pay a hundred for every smoke. And his thin beacon, it gets kind of annoying sometimes if you like uh, use it on your team. And your, gu your gun shoots like really fast, so it's actually harder to control your spray. And it could even get you killed. But his molly is actually really good for post plant if you know any lineups. Because when you use his molly for lineups and you use his ult, it could stall the, the fuse for like 15 seconds, I think. And that's like a really long time. So it could win you an entire round just if you know a brim lineup. And that really just like helps him out a lot. So for Killjoy, Killjoy is a very like interesting agent. And I think I would put her at A. Yeah, yeah. I think I would put her at A. This is because she's not like too broken or anything. And uh, she's just generally good. Her ultimate is good. Uh, it could like stop an entire push or it could make it really easy to retake. For example, on Ascent, on A site, if you just kill your ult and then you throw a Nano Swarm or the Molly into Wine, then like it basically covers all of sight and anywhere they could be and it should really make the uh, retake a lot easier and for defense her uh, utility is also really good like if you like five man push like, split a main her mollies is gonna like really stop it or it's gonna do like a lot of damage to you so it's kind of hard to five man rush against killjoy because her utility is actually really good also i wanted to mention that her bot on piss around even in like low ranks it's actually like, even in like high ranks act too but like in like low ranks i feel like it could do like so much damage, if, especially if you put it in like cheeky spots where the enemies won't expect it and it's kind of hard for them to shoot it out. And like a few patches ago, Killjoy's uh, bot did more dam does more damage. It could do serious damage on pistol round, like maybe take off like 30 or 40 HP, making you a lot more vulnerable. Moving on to Cypher, 
I think Cypher sits uh, kind of next to Killjoy. They're kind of like replaceable. But I think Cypher is just a tiny bit worse than Killjoy. Huh? Because um, Cypher's ult is just like not as good. And Cypher can't like really... It's like I feel like Cypher is a little bit easier to counter. Because Cypher you could just jet dash and you could like just race Satchel, Sova Shock Dart. I guess like some of those apply to Killjoy as well. But like with Cypher just like a jet dash literally clears all your trips. There's not much you could do and... I don't know, I just feel like Cypher's ult also doesn't really compare to Killjoy's. So I would put rank Killjoy a tiny bit higher than Cypher. So for Omen, Omen I think is, uh, I think Omen is like a, Omen is actually really good. Probably a low S or a high A. I think I'm gonna give him a S because Omen is just like really good. His smokes are free. He, gets, he replenishes his smokes. He gets two for free every round. It's free real estate. His uh, blind, his flash is really good. Uh, you could make a lot of plays with Omen with his TP. And his ultimate is like the only really downside that he has. It's not like the best and it costs uh, seven orbs, I believe. You don't get to use it that much and it's also like not the best. It just gets you a little bit of info. But other than that, it's just a really good agent to use. It's a really high pick rate in comp and in pro matches. So moving on to Phoenix. Phoenix is also controversial because depending on how you play him and depending on the comp, um, he could either be maybe like a C, B, or even an A or an S. It depends like on the player and if you like make smart plays. But generally, I think Phoenix is like a high B. Uh, this is because his ult is like really the best part about him. His ult, I think, is probably like the top three ults in the game. It, you just get so much space. You get an extra life. Even if you get like two, or, if you get like one or two kills, that's like great. And even if you don't kill anybody, you get a lot of information. And that should help you uh, win the round. It usually uh, gets the enemies off the site. Like for example, if you are playing Haven and like on C site, if you hear a Phoenix ult, like you're probably not gonna challenge him. You're probably just gonna run off the site and it makes um, defending the, the site a lot scarier. So that's really good about uh, Phoenix. But the only like downside is like, I feel like his, his Molly is like really easy to look away from. Like his regular util just isn't that great. Obviously, Phoenix is not a bad agent. All these agents, every, every single agent is actually like really good. I'm surprised like Valorant uh, and Riot. Uh, they actually did a really good job of balancing them because there's not like a single agent that's like completely broken or a single agent that's like a lot worse than all the other ones. This is just like relative to the other agents. And I think that he should sit pretty well on B. So Raze, Raze is actually really good on Bind and Icebox. In those maps, she's definitely an S tier uh, because you just get so much map control with the Roomba and the Nade. It's just like really useful. But in the other maps, she's not as good, but I still think I'll leave her a, a low S because her utility is just amazing. And her ult, it's like you should get a free kill 90% of the time. And I think Raze is just like an overall good character and any rank, almost any map. So yeah, I think Raze should sit on S. So next we have Reyna. Reyna is like a very interesting character and it could go from F to S tier depending on who plays it. And the only problem with Reyna is that if you can't hit your shots, you're just basically useless to the team. You provide almost no value other than like flashes. But if you have like a lurking Reyna who just dies, then that's like the worst thing you could ask for. But if your Reyna is really good, then it can make winning the game a lot easier. And um, everybody obviously wants a good Reyna on their team because that's just... You know, Reyna is like scary, I guess. But with Reyna, I feel like it's just like really fun to play her. And she has a like really high pick rate in the low ranks. But as you go like higher into the ranks and as you uh, go in pro play, her pick rate falls a little bit, but she's still like a decent agent. But I think I would put Reyna at C tier. Huh? But before you guys like call me out or get mad, just think of just, I'm saying that Reyna definitely has the potential to be S. And if there's a good player that's playing Reyna, she's definitely an S tier. But just generally, in uh, Immortal and Radiant and Pro Play, Reyna, she's just, she's just not as consistent as the other agents. So that's why I put her on C. So with Sage, Sage is just awful. There's literally no use of Sage. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Sage is actually really good. And her ult is probably the best ult in the game. I think Sage has the best ult in the game. And she's also really consistent on all the maps. On Icebox, she's just probably the best agent you could have for Icebox. Um, all the other maps, she's just amazing. Her slow orbs really, are, they're cheap and they provide a lot of um, 
a lot of time and it could stop a five-man rush, give your team time to rotate. For example, like on Split, if you're a Sage is playing Heaven, which most of the time she should be playing Heaven, uh, if there's like a fast five-man B, she just throws two slow orbs and that just stalls for the longest time. And by that time, your teammate should have already rotated and it should make the route a lot easier to win. And her ult is just actually the best ult in the game. It makes, it could turn around the uh, situation so quickly from like, let's say, I don't know, like it could make a 4v5 instantly into a 5v4 and it's just, it really changes the game. She's just like super consistent. So she definitely deserves the S tier. So Sky, Sky is also interesting. Um, I've seen a lot of people, people put her really low. Some people put her really high. And honestly, I think Sky sits next to Reyna on C tier because Sky is, her, she's actually pretty good. And her flashes are cost only a hundred each. So, and you get a free flash every round. So you're actually only playing $200 or 200 credits for flashes, and which are actually really useful. They give you information. You could throw them across basically the almost the entire map. Her dog, good for information. And her ult is like really the only downside. It's really just like, it's not the greatest. It's kind of like her, like a dog, like her dog ability. It doesn't really, it like almost never concusses them. It just really, you just give, it's for information. But if it's like a, I don't know, like a 2v2 and you use a sky ult and you don't know where the enemy players are, it reveals them. That's like great. So yeah, sky is just, uh, like I said before, all of these agents, every single agent in the game is good, but this is just compared to other ones. And like the only reason Sky is rated this low is because uh, the agents above her are like, I guess, more consistent and uh, just have a higher pick rate and more, more viable. But that doesn't take anything away from Sky. So moving on to Sova. Sova is actually probably the best agent in the game. Let's go. His utility, his drone and his recon are just the two best abilities in the game. Like his drone gets so much information. His recon gets so much information. Um, Sova is literally, I think, uh, has almost 100% pick rate in pro play. Shots done. And the only thing that's like not the best about Sova is his ult. I feel like it's not the best unless you're really good with him. But if you're just like an average player, his ult, you shouldn't like, you'd be like uh, surprised to even get like one kill because his ult is kind of hard to use and you have to predict the enemies and be good with, you just have to have like good game sense to play Sova. Huh? But if you have that down and you know a few lineups, uh, Sova is like, Consistent, 100% good in every map, every situation. There's not like a time where you don't want Sova on your team. So moving on to Viper, Viper recently got a buff that if you walk through her smokes or her mollies or her wall, you instantly take 50 damage, instantly 50 decay. And that is just really good. Like on maps like Split, uh, you could literally just stop an entire five man push literally on any site. For example, if you play B Heaven, uh, and you throw your wall on A and you have a molly, like your uh, orb for B and you just watch mid, you could literally stall all three choke points, mid, A and B uh, with just Viper Util. And if they decide to like just push through, your team should be able to take care of them because they're half uh, HP or 50 uh, decay. So with that in mind, Viper is actually just like a mid A. Before she was probably like a C or an F. And also not to mention that Viper post plant lineups I actually think she's a high A. Just her lineups for post plants are just amazing. And you could win an entire round, even if you like don't even like, I've seen people win 1v4s just with Viper and they have um, a poison cloud on the bomb and they just throw Viper lineups, they win. It's actually insane. So if you know you're a Viper, then definitely a very good agent. Maybe even S tier if you're very experienced. So moving on to Yoru. Um, Yoru isn't bad, right? Um, he yeah, got a lot of changes recently and a lot of buffs, but I still think Yoru is probably the worst agent in the game. I don't think Yoru is bad, like I said. This is just compared to the other agents. Yoru is definitely a very good agent. And um, if you know how to use him right and you use his fake footsteps to uh, fake a rotate and you use his um, ult to get a lot of information and you use his like TP like to, to fake out the enemies, th those are like pretty good uses. And um, it's also, like a bonus that if you throw your footsteps through the teleporter on bind, it makes the noise at like a person is TPing. It's just like a lot of plays you could do with Yoru if you're uh, smart about it. But the only problem is that just because he's just not too consistent, these plays are extremely good on paper, 
but just in reality, you're not going to be making these plays every round. And compared to the other agents that are just like so much more viable, I think yours is just going to have to be, uh, be put in F tier for now. So uh, finally, we have Astra. Astra is like the newest agent in the game as of recording this video. And so far, she's actually pretty good. Uh, she's been used a lot in pro play and uh, all her abilities are really good. The only problem I feel like is her her pull, like her pull orb or whatever. It's not that good and it's not strong enough. I feel like if it was a little bit stronger, it'd be more viable. But I still think Astra is a mid A. Her smokes are great. Her ult is actually pretty good too. I thought it was, when I first saw it, I thought it was not going to be that good. But it actually cuts out all information from the enemies. And I saw this actually used in a pro match and I thought it was very interesting how they, they use the Astra wall on C. Uh, Haven, right? And the enemy team all rotated to C because they thought they're gonna execute on C. But in the meantime, they just all rotated to A and they just got a free site. So obviously Astra is a lot harder to use than maybe like Omen, but it's gonna be very interesting to see how she's gonna be used in upcoming like tournaments. So yeah, I think Astra sits pretty comfortably in A spot. So with that being said, this is the completed tier list. Don't take this too seriously. This is just my opinion. And this could change over the next weeks, over the next seasons. If they add new agents, they change everything around. But as of now, I think uh, Riot is doing a pretty good job with their agents. Everything is pretty balanced. Um, I don't think any agent really uh, needs a nerf. And I think maybe only Yoru needs like a tiny buff. But other than that, I think all the agents are pretty good. And it's definitely, definitely fun to like play around with them, uh, how they're all different and still balanced. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, make sure to subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.